last six weeks to give you an idea of where we are right now. Okay. For Israelis, the last six weeks started in 2005. Meaning, for us, the context of what's going on, 2005, we left the Gaza Strip. 2006, in elections throughout the Palestinian Authority, Hamas won the elections. In 2007, they were fired from being the premiership in that sense. And in June 2007, seven years ago, they violently took over the Gaza Strip from the Palestinian Authority. This isn't about us. This is about them. That's it. When they violently took over the Gaza Strip in 2007, what the Hamas did and what they've done to this day for the last seven years, and here it's the Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, which rules now out of Ramallah. They, they, the Hamas, built a parallel governing system. And when I say parallel, people get the idea that this was the Palestinian Authority government. People came to work, they sat, okay? And in the other room next door was the Hamas one. No. Palestinian Authority continued to this day to pay 40,000 Palestinians in the Gaza Strip every month their salary for the last seven years to do nothing. They stay at home. The structures, the building, the government, the medical issues, the hospitals, the education, all of the different bureaus, the finance, everything like that, that was all taken over by the Hamas. The buildings were taken over by the Hamas. And the Hamas immediately, from June 2007, built a parallel system, which is what runs the Gaza Strip. It's their people. And for the last seven years, or I should say six and a half years, they paid their people out of suitcases of dollars that would come in from our lovely, you know, wonderful, we're all enamored right now with the Qataris, right? We're all aware. Okay, the Qataris, it's okay. Qatar, Sudan, Iran, all sorts of different countries were willing to pay that. Which means that in the Gaza Strip, the two main employers were the Hamas paying for that governmental structure, and of course the other suitcases went to the terror structure, to the military structure, <coughs> to the strategic capabilities, all coming in so that the Hamas employ a lot of people. That's a lot of money that goes out. The Palestinian Authority didn't step out of the door. I emphasize, they were overthrown, their people were killed, and for the last seven years they continued to pay the salaries to the people who were sitting at home because essentially what they said is, if I don't pay you, then who's going to support me at all inside the Gaza Strip? So you had these, I don't know if they're really PA supporters, but they were the people who were working for the Palestinian Authority until the violent takeover. That's the setting. Because from 2011, the Hamas parallel government in the Gaza Strip started to get more recognition than the Palestinian Authority, the one that Israel negotiates with, the one that Israel is hoping to arrive perhaps someday along the way at a different resolution with, the one that sits in Ramallah and openly, clearly is not Zionist, they don't think that Herzl was a good idea, but they state clearly that they want to arrive at a negotiable resolution with the Israelis, not the use of violence, Abu Mazen Mahmoud Abbas, who is the president of the Palestinian Authority, he's the chairman of the PLO, he's the head of the Fatah party, he's all three of these different ones. He sits there and in Arabic openly states that, and that doesn't make him more loved, okay? But he's very clearly that he wants to achieve it through negotiation tables and United Nations and world influence, but not through violence. And from 2011, with all of that turmoil, Egypt, Egypt, Yemen, Egypt, Yemen, Libya, Tunisia that started it before, going on into Syria, everybody looking at all the turmoil around, the Hamas looked around and saw, and you know what happened? Tunisia, they voted in the Muslim Brotherhood. Egypt, they voted in the Muslim Brotherhood. Yemen, well, Yemen is a little, it's a little bit more esoteric. Libya is falling apart, but they suddenly saw the rise where all of these Sunni Muslim Brotherhood different type of parties. They were all out there, and you know who they're coming to visit? They weren't going to visit the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah. They were all walking in through the Egyptian doorway into the Gaza Strip because Egypt and the Gaza Strip have a border. They've had it from 2005 because we left in 2005 all of the Gaza Strip. And you could come in and in come the Turkish foreign minister, 
the Tunisian foreign minister, the Qatari foreign minister, the Malaysian, you could see it was the Muslim and the Arab countries, and all of these people have never visited the PA in Ramallah. As high as you go is as low as you go. Because in the summer of 2013, after two years of the Muslim Brotherhood, when the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt for two years both were voted into parliament and then they were voted into the presidency and then they started to talk about the constitution and what basically at the end brought a Sisi to oust Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood was on the issue of the constitution not in the same way that we think of in Canadian or US terms but not that different because they, they the Muslim Brotherhood and President Morsi as the Muslim Brotherhood president wanted to put into the Constitution recognition of Sharia law. Okay? That means you're putting, you know, it's funny because Jewish religious law and Muslim religious law are books. You don't usually say Christian religious law. It's, it's, it's a different type of, you know, the, the whole aspect of what does it mean also with religious law. But to put Muslim Sharia law into the constitution of Egypt immediately meant that the Christian minority of Egypt called the Coptic, <coughs> if you have the recognition of the Sharia law in the constitution, what does that do to that minority? So that's one aspect of it, but it wasn't the only one. And at that stage along the way, the military, the defense minister, now he is the president, more, um, sorry, a CC, they initially arrested the president, put him in jail, the parliament was closed down, since then, this all happened from the summer of last year, 2013. You know, just think about it, the Hamas, everybody was going to visit them. And you know who were their biggest backers was the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt? It's the big brother who's helping the little brother. Hamas was doing it in the Palestinian arena. The Egyptians are doing it in the Egyptians arena. We'll all be together. We'll bring in this whole new world. And from those heights went to the devils. Because Assisi did not just take action in Egypt. Assisi, the Egyptian now president, took action on the Egyptian Gaza Strip arena. 